Okay, we're going to do the Diego Rivera piece uh, before we get into um, uh, him. Uh, we want to be aware of one of the movements that he's a part of. Stylistically, we can call him in many ways a surrealist. He's related to the surrealists, but we also associate him most strongly with the Mexican muralist movement. Uh, so... <laughs> Three M's, right? Uh, the Mexican are with Mexican muralism, right? Mexican muralism came out of the revolution of around uh, started around 1910 in Mexico uh, that revolted against uh, Porfirio Diaz, who had been the dictator for about 30 years. Um, and so it is uh, Mexican muralism is um, guided by a lot of the revolutionary ideals that inspired the revolution so uh focusing on um you know kind of uplifting the popular masses uh and uh you know universal education universal health care um and so we're interested in um you know a, a total kind of uplifting of the popular of of of, of the of just the general populace um uh, the poor mostly, uh, and a lot of reform. Um, so, uh, why is that so important? It's because the vast majority of people were, um, illiterate and, <laughs> and not educated. There was no, um, requirement for any kind of education. Um, and so, uh, prior to the revolution, uh, not much opportunity for education, et cetera. Um, and so one of the goals of the Mexican muralism was to offer, you know, painting works that that are have um, didactic purpose, right? Have a teaching purpose to teach about history, about Mexican history. Um, and so the style that gets developed during the Mexican muralism, which again, I think is in a lot of ways influenced with, with Rivera in particular, influenced by surrealism. We don't want to call it straight up surrealism, but influenced by surrealism um, uh, becomes very closely uh, associated with um, uh, the rest of Mexican art. Um, so, uh, in, um, Mexican muralist paintings, we'll see a lot of work that addresses not just the present of Mexico or the recent past, but also the, the distant past, including Aztec, um, history. Um, we'll see images of peasants, uh, fighting with, with soldiers, the common people, et cetera, et cetera. These murals that were created during the Mexican muralist movement, you know, uh, were usually placed on uh, very highly visible visible public spaces, including the one that we're going to look at, um, which was not placed in a, um, a government building, but was in pla was placed in a very fancy hotel, which was an interesting choice. Kind of wonder how he managed to get that to happen. Um, so here it is. Uh, this is the piece itself. It is 51 by 15. It's no longer it's in its original location. Now it's in a museum devoted to some of his works, uh, his muralistic works. Um, so uh, we want to know about Mexicanidad. You should read about that. I'm not going to read. I'll go through this whole presentation because I'm going to make this available to you. Um, so Mexicanidad is going to be an important idea, you know, trying to uh, suggests that, you know, the more, the more indigenous, more local um, identities and, and culture uh, should no longer feel inferior because generally the idea prior to the revolution was that it's really only the European influ the European um, uh, presence and influence that it should be um, valued in Mexican culture. Um, so really kind of tying themselves back to Europe. So obviously there'd be an emphasis on a lot of uh, kind of hierarchical class systems. Think back to that Casta painting, right? That this makes sense. We see where the roots of this was. Um, Moving on, uh, so it was created in the Hotel de Prado, which is a very fancy hotel in Mexico City. Um, I thought, sorry, that should be capitalized, Mexico City. Um, uh, and so we know that it's kind of very pointedly directing itself to people who would stay in this very fancy hotel. It's not as if, um, uh, you know, we, we still don't have upper classes in Mexico after the revolution. There still certainly are still upper classes in Mexico after the revolution. And um uh, so it's really, you know, kind of flies in their face in a lot of ways. One of the things that actually got him in, in a lot of trouble was this particular deed 
detail. Uh, sorry, this is a black and white version. Uh, initially, this guy right here uh, was holding a piece of paper. Uh, and he was, I can't remember his name, but he's a famous um, Mexican writer. Um, oh, Ignacio somebody, I can't remember. Um, it says, uh, God does not exist. Dios no exist existe. I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish and my accent's crap. So, um, so this was something that seriously upset people. Um, and, you know, Diego Rivera was an atheist. Diego Rivera was also a communist. Um, so this should be no surprise. This got him in a lot of trouble. In fact, this part of the mural was covered up for a long time because it, this was so upsetting to uh, to the to the crowds that would come into the hotel. Eventually, it was painted over. Um, uh, so we've got a hand here. That should remind you maybe a little bit of um, some other things that we might have come across. Um, so I'm going to let you uh, go through the rest of this uh presentation yourself. You should be able, I kind of pointed out the different sections of the, uh, I have here kind of a, a, a shortened version of what you can read in the Khan Academy article, which is here if you wanted to. Um, so of what you see in the different sections, uh, the left star section, we have conquest and colonization. Um, in the center, we have, uh, event eventually will lead to the fight for independence, but Primarily, it's the years and years of dictatorship under Porfirio Diaz. Um, uh, we have this this figure is very interesting. You'll hear more about her in the video. Um, then we have the fight for independence. Um, you know, uh, we ha we don't see the fight for independence here, but we see why we have the fight because of Porfirio Diaz. Um, we have then the the revolution. We see some activity there. Uh, and then on the far right, we have modern achievements, kind of everybody's included. Um, we have uh, Francisco I. Madero. Um, so you will read all about that um, or hear all about that in the uh, in this video, which is excellent. Um, and I highly recommend. In fact, I require that you watch it. Thank you very much.